Welcome back to Bayou Time. Phone lines are now open, 879-1231 if you'd like to get involved. Of course, we're taping live on Tuesday night. It's about 10 after 6, and we have an open topic tonight. Uh, well, not really an open topic. We'd like to tailor it to a few subjects, if you will. Of course, yesterday we had a major rain event in the area, uh, and there were a lot of street floodings. I understand a lot of homes were in danger, but, but for the most part, everybody uh, you know, stayed high and dry. Uh, at least their homes were. But if you would like to comment on a specific issue where you live, uh, you know, and how your neighborhood fared in all the rain yesterday, you can feel free to do so. I know the parish president was on yesterday with Martin taking phone calls. Uh, you know, and we always invite public officials of any capacity to come on the show. Uh, during these times to, 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 to discuss things. Uh, on the past, we've had council members, uh, we've had parish presidents, uh, mayors. Uh, you know, Martin and uh, HDV usually have an open policy when it regards to that. And also, if, if, if you're a candidate or a person thinking of running for an elected office and you would like to announce your candidacy, uh, feel free to come on Bayou Time and uh, introduce yourself to the public, as we've had a few people do that. Uh, in respective elections as well. So if you would like to come on and announce, feel free to do so. Just call the station during normal business hours so they can set up a time for you to come on by you time. Uh, so with that, you know, we'd like to open up the phone lines to discussing, you know, the flood event yesterday, uh, really a technology issue, how secure you feel using today's technology. It's kind of being brought to light with uh, the Rupert Murdoch issue and News Corp and how they were able to tap into people's voicemails. Um, you know, it's kind of a scary thing to know somebody, not the government either, and just a private entity or an individual could be tapping in, you know, and hacking into your uh, personal emails or uh, voicemails. So if you'd like to comment on that, feel free to do so. And I guess, you know, you can play off of that as well with, you know, knowing those risks out there. You know, how young is or, or what's the appropriate appropriate age to allow a child or, or, or children to have cell phones. You know, you see more and more children having cell phone these days, and uh, certainly we can see the dangers to that. So if you'd like to discuss any of those issues, feel free to call in. The lines are all lit up, so let's just go right down the line. Thanks for holding patiently. Welcome to Bayou Time. Hello, Jason. Hi. <clears throat> yes, um, my name's Ricky Sheremy. I'm a chairman of Solid Fruits Beachfront Development District. Okay. And. Uh, are you familiar with the Caminata Headlands project? Um, n not not by that name. W w where are you talking about? Okay, it's a government project mm -hmm. and state. Uh, uh, is that what BP operative? is helping uh, replace? N no, no, this is okay. uh, funded by the federal government and uh, seventy million dollars from the state. It's a three hundred and seventy million dollar project. All right, they're going to be building the beach up from the rocks at Bell Pass, Port Fouchon, all the way to Caminata Pass. Right. 14 and a half miles of beach. They're gonna pump in sand, they're gonna barge in sand from Ship Shoals. It's gonna be the same quality sand as you have in Pensacola and in Florida, white coarse grain sand. Oh, really? They're, they're gonna build a beach up eight feet high, half a mile wide from Bell Pass to Caminata Pass. Okay, so that's and, from uh, Fouchon all the way across through uh, all the Grand Isle. Yeah, okay, but it's going in right before you really get to the Grand Isle Beach, then. At the pass, at the okay. Caminata at, at Pass. Caminata Pass, right? Okay. Right. Well, it's going to encompass Elmer's Island okay. and Fouchon Beach, fourteen and a half miles. Well, and I and I am familiar with that because I thought I saw something uh, regarding BP, or at least. Uh, the governor made a commitment to 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 funding that project somewhat, and I'm okay. familiar with it because just a few weekends ago, you know, I was riding over the bridge leaving Grand Isle, and to the left you can see Caminata, and, uh, and and you can see you know Elmer's Island there, but you can also see where you know there are some breaks now uh, in the beach going at kind of behind it, and I was wondering after I saw that story if that would kind of help repair some of those breach spots. Well, Jason, they're going to be, they're going to, um, they're going to build up about a quarter of a mile further offshore than where the surf line is right now, okay. and then a quarter of a mile inland. So the beach itself is going to be half a mile wide, oh, wow. eight feet high, and it's going to be the most beautiful beach yeah. and, uh, you know, more beautiful than Mississippi and Texas and, uh, 
You know, the reason I'm calling, I, well, we interviewed a lot of people when we had the beach open, and there was a lot of people from Terrebonne Parish that would drive over to Fouchon Beach to crab mm -hmm. and fish and all that. And, uh, well, just getting down to it, we're having a, a, our meeting, the Solid Food Beachfront Development District is having a meeting tomorrow night at 6 o'clock at the library in Galliana. And they're going to have a PowerPoint demonstration of what presentation on the project. Okay. The engineers that are going to be doing the project and uh, the office of uh, uh, OCPR is going to be there with the state. Okay. And they're going to totally explain everything that's going to happen on that project. So, you know, I thought it might have been a good idea for maybe y'all to cover it and then that's, anybody in yeah. the listening area that's interested in the project to, to attend the meeting tomorrow night at 6 o'clock and uh, they can inform themselves on, on, on what's going to happen here. You know, this could be a whole new economic engine for full of food. And, and like I said, a lot of people in Terrebonne use that beach. So right. there may be some, some listeners out there that's interested in attending the meeting. And, right. Uh, now, I'm, let I'm me ask you, them now, you does, does Lafouche Parish actually go all the way to Kamenata Pass? We go to Bayou Thunder. Okay. And Bayou Thunder is the, is the dividing line. You have, uh, we have, a not, Lafouche Parish has nine and a half miles of beach. Okay. That goes to Elmas Island, and then Elmas Island's got around three and a half, something like that. Then we go west to Belfast. Right. We have a beach restoration project that was put on hold because of the BP Hall spill, but it would build from the Brox of Belfast all the way to Timbalare Island, so it, we would have kind of looking at maybe setting up a primitive camping area there. Well, the you know, north, yeah. You'd have to go by boat, but... Uh, well, that's significant so, because not only for the beauty it would, it, it would allow uh, in the scenery, uh, in the recreation purposes, but also, you know, as a buffer for storm surges and things of that sort. So that's that, correct. And you know, Jason, what uh, we don't have a whole lot of infrastructure right now. So, you know, I know I know Terrebonne's got a, a, a campaign uh, nationwide, bringing people down here for the fishing and all that. And you know, that might attract more people to Terrebonne if they could drive down to the beach and. Uh, yeah, and experience that because now I know that the beaches in Terrebonne, you got to go by boat. That's right to get them, and a lot of people don't have a boat, you know. So, mm -hmm. well, that's that's yeah. excellent information. Good for the whole area is what I'm saying. Yeah, Mr. Shermie, thank you so much for calling. We appreciate that information. And yeah, if y'all want to cover it, it's at six o'clock tomorrow night at the Salafouche Library in Galliana. Right. Okay, I'll make sure right. uh, Jason Serenier heard that. Thank you very much. Good. All right. Uh, appreciate the call on that. Let's go down to the next caller. Thank you for holding patiently. Welcome to Bayou Town. Hey, gentlemen. Jason, what's going hey, on, cool? Uh, uh, not much. Let me ask you, what you want to talk about, the flood, technology, or the public school buses? Which one? Well, basically, I'm going to talk about the flood. The flood? All right, go ahead. Well, I was on, I think it was yesterday with Martin and Mr. Claude Day. And I forgot to tell Mr. Claude that he is actually one of our better parish presidents due to the fact that he is a very sharp businessman. Okay. And just because he didn't know this or that as in the beginning, I'm sure he's got both feet planted in the ground by now. But I was going to give him a compliment on the good job he was doing. I just, it had slipped my mind because I was talking about Jean Street and how that let poor little old lady kept flooding. All right. And that councilman should have done something for that person and the people around Jean Street as a councilman. This little old lady really can't afford her carpet being pulled up all the time for a rain. She really can't. Mm -hmm. A social security check don't allow that. So uh, I'm not going to say who the councilman is because I figured that's kind of rude. And as far as the government and taking all the taxes out that lottery check, yeah, you know my stand on that, partner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, 
That's just ridiculous. And they say they broke and they want to take people's social security away. <laughs> well, How is this possible? <laughs> I don't know. Well, but look, just just think if he just think if it wasn't the luck of the draw, okay, that he didn't just walk into a store and luckily win a four hundred and twenty five thousand dollars and then have hundred and twenty seven taken out in taxes let's say he went to school over a year's period of time or worked his way up you know after high school worked his way up from a oil field company all the way up to a CEO or something and worked very hard for that money right. and then the government took that much away uh, <laughs> you know so it, it poses a different question I understand we have to have taxes in order to to have luxuries in this world and have transportation and things of that sort and different things. Well, yeah, we have to have our highways and byways right. and everything else. But the thing is, it's just the fact that the government's freaking taking money. They shouldn't be taking because the government weighs, but they're making money off of lottery every time the lottery goes out. Well, and they're claiming they want our the uh, poor people's money, too. Let's just hope that that money that they've taken out of his check and the money that they use to... From, from the people who didn't win, go to the proper places, and that's to education in Louisiana. Exactly. Well, if you allow me to give me a shout-out, let me go. All right, go ahead. All right, well, I want to uh, uh, give me a shout-out to the Bodacious the Beautiful Brooks, Sexy Lexi, Gorgeous Gretchen, and as well as freaking Brandy the Beautiful and Amazing Amanda over at Uptown. All right, thank you, Ricky. Uh all right, let's go to the next caller. Thank you for holding patiently. Welcome to buy you time. Hello, Jason. Hi. Man, I'm glad to hear about that feed. That's going to be a nice sand burn. Oh, I, I tell you what. <laughs> That's what I had called for the third day that all deals came down. It's finally going to be a big one. Yeah, yeah. and that That's what they need to do to the whole coast and put rocks, you know. Right. No, I'm calling. I was watching C-SPAN. Okay. What's going on right now? They're trying to pass that uh, cut cap and balance bill. All right. You know, uh, why they, why they don't want to work together, man? I, I can't understand that. Obama offered three to one, three dollars for one dollar in revenue, three dollars a cut. You got? I, I didn't see that today. What do you mean? Well, in three other to words, one? Uh, for one dollar, he will cut three dollars. Okay. You know, one to three. All right. Of uh, of uh subsidies and all that you know what i mean so if they spend a dollar he's gonna cut three right okay so the republicans don't like that okay now here's the democrats the democrats want to pull the loopholes out of the uh, tax system for the rich and and these big companies all companies are not paying anything you know the 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 the, the, the republicans don't like that you know now the Republicans want to cut Social Security, which is what we pay. That's not a that's not an entitlement to me. I pay Social Security. Right. Well, I, so they I, shouldn't even touch that for the fifty pe people older. Well, do they want to cut it, or do they want to make it privatized, or make it go in a different direction, or do they just want to? Well, cut good it? chance we didn't. They didn't let Bush privatize it and then throw it in stocks. Mm -hmm. What would be what we would be at today? Well, you know, for working forty years. I understand. You know, I, I, some people may, instead of having the government take it out of their check and hold it, they would like to invest it themselves or put it in their own piggy bank so they know it's there if they need it. Jason, you know half of the people want to invest themselves. Well, and, and, but and, they have and, to pay it if they work. And you're right, because, and, and we've talked about this all the time, because then, then if they take it themselves and they have that lack They'll of personal responsibility and they blow it on something, then ultimately you and I are going to be footing the bill for them. Exactly. Anyway, so exactly. I, I understand that argument. So the best way to do it is take it out their check, just like you do. You know, that way when they get old, they will have some. Okay. You know, but that you know, the Republicans shouldn't do this, bro. They ought to work halfway and meet the Democrats. And give them the tax loop. Let, let's straighten out this tax. Let these rich people pay the same amount. All right, I understand you know? your position. And, and, and I agree with the Republicans on one thing. They need to cut. Okay. But they don't need to cut Social Security, which people pay. Right. They don't need to cut our soldiers. But they need to cut everything else that they don't need. Now, if I'd be President Obama, <coughs> I'd pay Social Security. I'd pay my soldiers. 
and my military. Okay. And then whatever's left, let them figure out what they're going to do with it. Thank you for the call. You know, and they need to cut their pay. Uh, the, the, I hear you loud and clear. Mr. Serenier in my, is telling me in my ear I need to take a break. Okay, Thank you for the but call. I'm sure glad about that beach, man. That's going to be nice. <laughs> I agree with you. That's that's a nice deal. Thank you again for the call. We appreciate it as always. Phone lines are still open, 879-1231. Those of you on the line, please hold patiently through the break. We're taking phone calls from everything that a debt ceiling issue to uh, how secure you feel with cell phones and uh, modern-day technology. Uh, to uh, you know anything else apparently that you would like to discuss it's an open topic tonight here on Bayou Time lines are all open 879-1231 we'll take a short break when we come back more with your phone calls 